He was a gamer guy just like you or me, I mean he spent all day hooked on his PC. B-U-U-T, one day he confessed his love online, only to discover he had fallen for a man using a girl's avatar. From that moment on, he promised himself not to fall in love again, but one day he receives a marriage proposal from a waifu in his guild, which he rejects. But this time it was different because she is actually a girl in real life, and on top of that, she has huge plots. I mean, huge feelings for the protagonist, so well, maybe this time the protagonist might actually get a wife. Or even, a harem? Wait, how? After rejecting the girl, Hideki Nishimura goes farming with his friends in a sort of dungeon, and it turns out the waifu who confessed, Akeo Tamaki, was part of his team, she was healing them. At the same time we meet a guy with a sword bigger than Zabaz's, this is Schwein, and another mage called Master who takes down all the monsters in one attack including Rujin, but hey, not everything was bad. Since when he wakes up he receives a hug from the waifu and she makes it clear that he is too. Good reasons to move forward. However, the time had come to say goodbye and return to the real world, since the guy had classes, there he tells his friends that he has a wife, but they assume it's a waifu from his video games, then Akane appears and starts insulting him for being an otaku. But he is saved from humiliation thanks to the teacher who enters the classroom and says there is an assembly, so while going, he bumps into a waifu who is very shy and runs away without saying anything. After this, we see the protagonist arriving at his house to turn on the PC and start playing Legendary Age, an RPG that the guy had known for more than a year, and well when he connects all he does is die over and over. Since the waifu who was healing him was distracted with the ring that the protagonist had given her to increase her powers, but as the waifu was in love they ended up getting married in the game, however in real life he had no luck with women. And well, while they are in a bar, he talks with his friends and the topic of love relationships stand out, then the blonde tells them that he was confessed to in real life, there he takes the opportunity to ask Rujin why he rejects the waifu so much. And he lies saying that he doesn't like marriages in games, but then the waifu contradicts him saying that he was rejected once in the game and to top it off the person he thought was a girl turned out to be an old man in real life. Well buddy, you tried. After this, the protagonist decided to leave his old guild and play alone until he found them and actually he wasn't ashamed of what had happened to him since he had fallen in love with the game character, not the person who controlled it. Actually he didn't give a damn, but well. After being ridiculed, the waifu tries to calm things down and confesses that she is a girl in real life who likes books and master is too, both attend high school but since no one believes her, she proposes to meet in real life. The next day the protagonist arrives at the meeting place and meets Akeo who turned out to be the shy waifu from his high school and that wasn't all since Schwein was none other than Akane, the blonde who teased him all the time and finally Master arrives, who was the president of the council, Kayo, and well, after all the members of Alley Cat meet, they go to a cafe to finish introducing themselves, there each one says their likes and they discover that they all attend the same high. School we also find out that the blonde's name in the game, in German meant pig, well yes people, the poor girl didn't even know what she was doing. They also asked the blonde why she rejected the guy who had confessed to her, and she did it because she doesn't want to date anyone at the moment, besides that way she would spend less time in the game. She talked so much about the protagonist and surely her soap lasts more than one year. Then, AKO recommends that she marry someone in the game, that way she could kill two birds with one stone, she could play and spend time with the person she loves, by saying that, the protagonist starts to think that she is actually his wife. Since she treats him the same as in the game, and this makes him somewhat uncomfortable, but well the guy came out winning people. At the same time we find out that Kaioa's family owns the school and several companies, now we know why the waifu spends so much buying items in the game, she also confesses that she had no friends other than them. Then, Akeo comforts her and they start discussing the game, since their teamwork wasn't being very good when farming. After this, it's time to say goodbye and the protagonist apologizes because he thought they were all boys, at the same time the blonde tells him that if he acts friendly with her at school she would give him a punch, however, they all had a good time. Then, Akeo goes with the protagonist, there she confesses that she accepted to be his wife in the game regardless of his real appearance in real life. This moves the waifu and she shows him her love in real life. Since apparently she didn't know how to distinguish between the game and real life, unlike the protagonist who didn't want to mix those feelings and so they agree to see each other later. Once at home, the protagonist connects to the game and they meet to farm, there we see that the girls took their real life appearance and Master was very eye-catching like that. 
There, she tells everyone to call her by her nick at school and disconnects, as does AKO and the protagonist is left talking with the blonde. There, she reminds him that the deal at school would be the same, and he had no problem with that. The next day, the blonde greets him in the middle of class. Wait, what? Who understands women? Well, the protagonist returns the greeting and the waifu starts acting differently so that others don't start suspecting, but things get ugly when AKO arrives and starts calling the protagonist Rujin in front of everyone. And to top it off says they spent a lot of time together the night before and reveals that they are spouses. You're screwed, dude. But that wasn't all, since the blonde tried to save the protagonist's skin and ended up getting dragged into AKO's nonsense, since she starts calling her by her nick from the game also in front of everyone and raises suspicions. So they take her outside and tell her that the game is not the same as real life, so they ask her not to call them by their game name in real life, and although the waifu doesn't understand at first, she finally accepts. After this, they return to class, and AKO tells the protagonist that she prepared lunch for them to eat together as spouses, and well that's where they end up confirming that the waifu is nuts and all she thinks about is the game, so they tell it to Kayo. Their AKO explains that she loves the protagonist because in the game he never treated her badly and that carried over to reality, but the protagonist didn't want that, so he proposes to find a way for her to learn to differentiate between the game and real life. Then Kayo says she will take care of that. Later, the waifu tells them that she formed an online games club and with that they can help AKO to differentiate and well, at first the blonde didn't want to accept, but when she saw that all the PCs were gamers, and the one she has is old, she decides to join. Night falls and the protagonist connects to the game, and while walking through the city looking for his companions, he meets Nikoheim, the waifu who broke his Kokoro a while ago. But the protagonist had already forgotten that and learned to separate the real world from the game, so they remain good friends. The next day at school, AKO kept calling the protagonist husband in front of everyone, and those rumors reached the ears of a teacher who calls the protagonist aside to ask him if they were dating, but the protagonist makes it clear that they are only friends. Then Kayo arrives interrupting and goes with the protagonist to the club. Once there, the protagonist realizes why AKO is so bad at playing, and it's because she doesn't know which items, costumes, and staves to use to improve, so the blonde and him help her with that and start farming. There they forbid Master to use premium items and the waifu without that was more lost than Santa in Carnival, just like AKO since they changed her configuration and she didn't know how to heal. However, the protagonist helps her and they barely manage to survive. So then, Nikoheim ends up teaching them math lessons and after finishing the exams, the teacher tells them that AKO passed. However, it was late and she didn't have time to stay and play, so she disconnects. That's when the protagonist talks with Master and the blonde, or rather asks them for advice. He wants to confess his love to AKO in real life, but since they've never had a boyfriend, they couldn't really help him. They just told him to do it and since they were spouses in the game, she would surely accept. Come on bro, with more faith than Toretto. The next day at school, the teacher announces the summer vacation, so they meet at the club before leaving classes as they wouldn't see each other for a while, but they still plan to play from their homes. Moreover, Kayo planned to celebrate with them on a camping trip. On the way home, the protagonist goes with AKO as usual and The next day, the guys wake up early as they meet up early to go camping. Then, AKO and the blonde arrive like zombies as they were practically asleep. There, Kayo tells them not to connect to the game all day since the idea was to enjoy the vacations by sharing in a different way. On the way, we learn that Kayo, the blonde, and the protagonist secretly planned not to play all summer, this way they would help AKO improve her obsession with the game. Once they arrive at Kayo's family's summer house, everyone settles in and goes out to sunbathe on the beach. There we see AKO getting nervous about being alone with the protagonist in a swimsuit. Then, the blonde arrives and asks if they had put on sunscreen, otherwise, they would be sore for a week, and since they hadn't, the blonde applies it to the waifu and then the three start applying it to the protagonist. Come down bro, keep the otter serene. After that, everyone goes to the sea to play separately, and when they come back, the teacher complains because they didn't play all together. Then the protagonist tells them that they were used to doing that, just like in the game, but well, in the end, they end up playing as a team some volleyball matches, building sandcastles, and laughing until they couldn't anymore. So the sunset came, and everyone went inside the house to rest. Then the protagonist decided to take a hot bath, where we see AKO enters without warning and sees his package, but the blonde arrives and takes her to the girl's bathroom, and oh, oh well, another debut row. 
Later, they gather and make some food, and then the protagonist and the waifu go out to watch the stars. There, Kayo helps him create a good atmosphere to declare his love for her again and lights some fireworks, so the waifu starts crying with happiness. There, the protagonist tells her that he loves her, and she tells him the same, but she still can't distinguish reality because she still thinks they are spouses in real life. And well, the protagonist sadly tells the girls what had happened, but he was not willing to give up yet. The next day, Kayo takes them to a hotel that conveniently has LA theme, so they connect to the game to make up for lost time. Moreover, there was a special event in the game, and it turns out it was similar to the hotel, so everyone goes to buy equipment and goes to their rooms to try them out. Yes, people, each room has its own gamer PC to connect, it's a dream come true. After this, we see that the protagonist and the waifu connect first and wait for the girls. There, Akeo invites the protagonist to her room to wait for them. The waifu seems Tio wants some horror since she saw the protagonist's sword. So, it turns out the waifu wanted to have a spicy conversation as a couple since they were alone in a hotel room, but then the protagonist disconnects and reconnects quickly. When she tells him this, he smiles sinisterly as if it wasn't him. While the protagonist is in his room, he notices he's been kicked out of the game and can't log back in. He then remembers Kayo mentioning that accounts were being hacked. He rushes to AKO's room to warn her that it wasn't him, that the Russian she was talking to was an imposter. When he gets to her room, the waifu comes out crying. He checks the game chat and realizes the imposter was asking for pictures and that the character Rujin was deleted, making the waifu sad, thinking it was her fault. This happened when the guy tried to log in from the PC in the lobby which cloned the main page, making it look just like the games, but what they did was take his data and send it to the real game. Sadly, he lost everything, including his invaluable items. Per guy, he's gonna have a breakdown. But the girls try to help him resolve what's happening and buy new items. Meanwhile, the protagonist talks to a friend inside the game for help, who is the leader of the extremist guild. When the protagonist tells him what happened, he agrees to help his fellow gamers. At the same time, Nikoheim gathers all her allies to help find the protagonist's items while he uses a secondary account he had created a long time ago. Later, while walking with Master through the game's merchant areas, they find a seller selling several of his items. They take the seller's name to report him. Kayo buys them back, feeling guilty about the hacking. Meanwhile, one of Nico's allies finds the engagement ring the protagonist had given to the waifu in a beast in the forest. Gradually, he starts to recover his things, cheering up AKO, who thinks it's all thanks to the power of love. Later, the guys meet in the game's inn, and the blonde tells them they haven't caught the hacker because they can't find his IP. Then the dark mage appears with bad news. The guy who hacked the protagonist had an online page where he bragged about his thefts, scamming people in various games, apparently trying to become famous or something. The blonde gets angry and starts cursing, as the guy not only sold game items but also traded them for real-world money. This gives the protagonist the idea to create a fake blog to attract the hacker's attention, and it works. The guy falls for it and tries to buy the items from the fake blog created by the protagonist and the girls. The next day at school, the protagonist sets a trap for the hacker in the game using his secondary account, proposing a trade for real money which is forbidden. The game administrators appear, and the protagonist reveals he did all this to catch him and to make him pay for making his wife cry. He's your idol because he's mine. They had proof of all the hacker's previous crimes, so both were banned, but the protagonist's secondary account only for three days as he helped catch the guy. The hacker faced charges and the Rujin character was restored. After this, the girls meet at Kaiowa's mansion for a sleepover to help Akeo socialize without the protagonist's presence and they invite Nanako. Once inside, they see she has many servants and even a butler. They welcome them and are glad to see Kayo has friends. Then she shows them the rooms and they enter Kaiowa's, where they see her $20,000 PC with many monitors. But it's not time to play, wait for the next time, AKO, don't get excited. So they start doing their holiday homework. Then, AKO goes to the bathroom and Nanako follows her to make sure she comes back to study. But after leaving the bathroom, they find a library with a suspicious chest containing a photo album of Kayo as a child. Suddenly, one of her servants appears and says they have no choice but to join her fan club. The two run away scared and hide under a table. There, Nanako takes the opportunity to say she wants to be her friend. When they come out of hiding, they realize they're lost and end up in the garden, so they call Kayo for help. 
After that, they realize they've been wasting time on foolishness and AKO hasn't made any progress on her homework, so they help her finish it before going to eat. Then, the waifus decide to take a bath together. Blonde starts complaining that all her friends are well-endowed and mentions the protagonist prefers slim girls. This gives her the idea to make a video call and show her body to the protagonist to see if he likes it. But the others try to stop her, running naked after her and take away her phone, preventing her from making a mistake. At night, the waifus go to sleep together. Nanako asks the waifu what she thinks about her marriage to the protagonist in real life. She responds trying to brainwash them, still comparing the game to real life. The waifus get scared and seek the protagonist's help. The guy tells AKO about his former healer and at the same time that when they return to classes she should stop saying they are married and just say they are friends. But she doesn't take it seriously, this waifu seems Tio play dumb when it suits her. The next day in class, the blonde grabs him by the neck and takes him to the stairs for a private talk. There, she asks what she could do to become a normal girl again. Nanako appears and starts teasing them, but it backfires as they start poking fun at her game pet, which always attracts attention during missions and ends up getting them thrashed and failing the mission. After all the welcomes for the new school year, everyone goes to the club. The teacher tells them that the cultural festival is approaching, but to participate, they must have achievements in the club. Since they don't have any, Kayo proposes participating in an event in the game, which is basically a PvP and they must win it to place the school's flag and display it at the festival. After class, AKO walks home with the protagonist and she tells him she's not too keen on participating in the new event, but at the same time she's happy to be going home with him. She also mentions that her class will be selling food at the festival, but the waifu really doesn't care about that. When they get home, everyone connects to the game and begins training in a kind of coliseum for the PvP. They realize that Master, despite having good stats, is not good for PvP because of her character, and the only one who could save them this time is AKO. So they think about changing the presentation or getting an OP, overpowered, team to fight, but they decide to go and fight as a team. In the fray, they realize it's not easy, as a whole group of players are trying to enter the castle and they get crushed in less than 10 seconds but they don't give up and think about building a giant to get past the wall. Then Nico's team appears, and since they are all good players, they manage to take the castle, but they don't last long as a stronger team beats them in seconds. The next day, all the classrooms start preparing for the cultural festival. AKO screams and everyone goes to see what's happening. She tells them that her classroom decided to do a cafe for the festival and chose her as the chief, so she has a lot of work to do, like making costumes and other things but the blonde tells her they will help her so she can calm down. After that, they go to the club. Kayo arrives with the teacher and Nanako as she asks them to join the club for more help and to succeed in taking a fortress. She also tells the guys that she hired a group of elite players known as Wallenstein to help them in the mission. So, the guys arrive walking all stylish and form an alliance with them. As they start devising a plan to attack, they realize that the mercenaries, despite having their gear at maximum level and being super OP overpowered, are quite boastful and somewhat foolish. But they have no choice but to follow their orders. When they reach the castle, they send AKO and set as a distraction, and the penguin-faced ones start shooting arrows at them. Then the protagonist and the blonde try to help, but the leader of the Wallensteins shows up and takes down two soldiers in less than a second. At least they were boastful but knew how to play. Then their entire clan joins in and starts decimating everyone else, so the protagonist's team doesn't have to do much. In the end, the leader tells Master to place a kind of crystal so that the fortress would be captured by their guild. Then he says he's going to town to re-equip with his team and leaves them in the castle, but the very son of a gun tricks them as when the kids were about to show their achievement at the festival. The leader starts eliminating his own team and takes the fortress for himself. Enough Freezer, but since the kids knew they had no chance against him, they had no choice but to leave him on his throne and retreat. At the end of the day, classes finish and they return home. The blonde tells her friend that despite having lost, she feels good because, after all, that victory wasn't theirs. On the other hand, the protagonist sits in a park with AKO and tells her she must try hard with her presentation at the festival. She's sad about what happened and apologizes for not doing anything, but the protagonist congratulates her and makes her feel better, telling her she leveled up while giving her a strong push on the back, tutorial on how not to treat a girl part 1. Moreover, she always used to run away when something happened, but now she stays with him, showing she's progressing. 
The waifu is happy about this and takes the opportunity to say they still have a chance to win a castle. The next day, the protagonist enters Kayoa's office and despite being close with her, he still doesn't call her by her name. So the waifu asks him to do so, but when he does, she turns redder than a tomato and her heart almost bursts out of her chest because no man outside her family had ever called her by her name before, but the thing is, he was there because he was worried about the next mission. She tells him she bought a lot of items so they wouldn't fail again and to relax a bit. After that, he goes to the club. There he finds the blonde, AKO, and Nanako dressed as cosplayers, all calling him master. These waifus want the beast within him to awaken. They explain that the uniforms were for the festival presentation, but AKO hadn't done anything as the person in charge, only the uniforms were ready. So the protagonist goes to her classroom and tells his friends to help her, as they had left the hardest work to her. He also takes the opportunity to teach AKO that she can ask for support from her friends when needed, just like in the game, something he learned in online gaming. Thanks to these words, the guy gets an idea. He starts forming alliances with Nikoheim's soldiers, don't know why they didn't help last time, but well, also with the leader of the extremist guild, who, although they didn't have soldiers to help fight, the mere fact of forming an alliance would earn respect. As their guild was well known, so, the three guilds start training together and prepare to take on the treacherous Wallenstein Guild. As the festival day approaches, we see the students preparing everything in the school corridors while the club discusses the castle takeover. The protagonist tells them he went with AKO to talk to the leader of Wallenstein, who told them not to defend the castle because it was boring, he thought he was too cool. Kayo mentions that regardless, the castle will be in chaos with other clans, and indeed it was. However, their battle was against the treacherous clan. Once they enter the game, they notice that the castle's flag had changed back to the previous penguin clan, so they begin their attack all at once after Set knocked down the door with a giant. Yes, folks, the waifus were well prepared. But that wasn't enough, so she starts shouting to distract the penguins while the blonde sneaks into the castle and takes down the remaining guys to then capture it. The fight wasn't over yet as they had to protect the fortress for 20 minutes. Another group of penguins arrives, but Master waits for them to gather and blasts them all with her ulti, after all, that waifu's attack was overpowered. However, when there were 10 minutes left, the Wallensteins arrive and start defeating everyone. The blonde drinks a power-up drink and withstands the leader's attacks, then manages to deplete some of their life and take one down, but she is eliminated. IT was five against one. The rest rush in, knowing they don't have much time. They find the protagonist defending the doors alone and then Set appears to scare them so they end up using their special attacks. Their sacrifice wasn't in vain, they manage to beat the rest, leaving only the leader against Master. She uses a special ability that makes her invulnerable, so the guy starts attacking like crazy while the waifu almost makes herself a coffee. Eventually, they win by time and keep the castle. Afterwards, everyone in the club finds out that Kaya was the one who bought the gamer PCs they had in the club, that was kind of expected, but well. The waifu didn't mind spending money on her friends, just like she did at the end of the battle, buying a lot of items to become invincible. She feels great about winning with her friends. The protagonist sees AKO is excited about the victory and tells her she should feel the same about the cultural festival. On the day of the festival, everyone does their activities and the kids show off their achievement of taking the castle. They all share and have a great time, even the teacher performs a concert. At the end of the day, the protagonist and AKO have a moment alone. The moment we were all waiting for is about to happen as the waifu moves in to kiss the protagonist, but then all the other waifus arrive and interrupt them. The protagonist clarifies that he was thinking of giving her a prize in the game, but she still thinks that both in the game and in real life, they are spouses. If you liked the anime, don't forget to leave the word spouses in the comments, like the video, and subscribe to keep up with all the cool animes we upload to the channel.